Welcome back to the Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity. We've been speaking this hour with Mark Monchak, author of Culture of Opportunity, How to Grow Your Business in the Age of Disruption. Mark, what do you hope people will, who read your book will get out of the book? What's your intention? My intention is to understand that we have a choice, going back to the dog on the side of the road problem, Man. we have a choice to stop, to care, and to be proactive in our life, not just to think the same thoughts over and over, over again, again and be frustrated. Uh, we can choose who we work for, we can choose how we work, we can choose who we buy from, where we live. Now, of course, I'm not saying those choices are easy, I'm not saying right. that um, everybody has equal choices, but the book is really about understanding that if we're gonna live in a world that is sustainable over hundreds of years, we have to shift the way that we're thinking about uh, the environment, about right. the people who live on this earth, and particularly customers, employees, and communities. And if we can do that, and we are seeing a big change right. in that, mm -hmm. um, then we can have a much, much better world. Right. And rather than waiting for government to do something, we right. could wait a long time, yeah. uh, that, <laughs> that businesses can be and need to be, and in many cases are being, the drivers of social change. And you as an employee, as a, an executive, as an entrepreneur, as an investor, uh, as a uh, partner in some way, whether you're a vendor or some, wherever you are in, this, in the ecosystem of the company, you can actually do something yeah. uh, to make a world better through your interactions with business. So would you say, I mean, given all the mishigas and craziness in the world these days, uh, are you hopeful for the future? Yeah, I am. Um, I, I am a, a glass half empty, glass half full person. People <laughs> always say, I'm a glass half full person. I see the glass, I say, yeah, I, I appreciate the water that I have in the glass, mm -hmm. but I also think that why should the glass not be full? Right. Because, you know, there are people who need to drink from that other half of the glass. Yeah. Well so uh, I, I am hopeful, but I'm also understanding that um, hope is not a strategy. Right. And um, we've got to do something in order to make sure that, that our optimism is warranted. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a kind of the glass is always full kind of mm -hmm. guy because half the glass might only have water or wine or whatever's mm -hmm. in the glass, but the rest of the glass is filled with air. True. So it's yeah. always completely yeah. full. Yep. Um, so now you operate out of a very interesting space uh, called the Center for Social Innovation. And I was wondering if perhaps you could just talk about that as uh, this is very much an example of a place that creates a culture of opportunity, uh, isn't it? Yeah, great. So the Center for Social Innovation, which I am a founding member of, it's at 601 West 26th Street all the way to West Side near 12th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And going back to our conversation about millennials, our members probably we have 70 to 80 percent of our members are millennials so mm. um i have and being a father of a millennial very protective of yeah. the <laughs> idea of millennials i think we're in an era of millennial bashing yeah. so a lot of the critique is millennials are selfish millennials are um uh, entitled entitled yeah. you know they're lazy they can't stick to anything First of all, there's 90 million millennials, so right. you can't make a generalization about 90 million people. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> I will tell you that if you go and see the millennials who work out of the Center for Social Innovation, they are very different from the stereotype that people have. Right. Okay? And I'm very, very much wary of stereotypes of any group. Right. But our millennial cohort is extremely ambitious. They're extremely hardworking. Mm -hmm. They are very committed. Um, they are very consistent, and actually, we keep them as members over a fairly long period of time. I mean, we've been only we've only been around for four years, but we've had mm -hmm. a lot of our members stay and stay with the same organizations over a long period of time. Why? Because they care about the organizations. The organizations care about them. Right. The center cares about people. We try to create a really humane and fun and sensitive and funky right. workplace where you can really be creative. So we have right. 220 small wow. organizations, social enterprises, and nonprofits. About 550 to 600 people work out of our space. We right. have about 30,000 square feet of beautifully designed space around mm -hmm. three principles, sustainability, mm -hmm. local sourcing, mm -hmm. and what we call maximum return on collisions, meaning oh. we want people to literally collide with one another. <laughs> so the kitchen is the central focus of our community. People right. collide around food, right. around coffee. We have an, a beautiful event space, so we have events there yes. every day of the year, yeah. and people meet each other uh, purposely or accidentally going to right, events. Right, right. Uh, we have an open space design as well as a closed space design. So we have a sort of a hybrid, so mm -hmm. you can work in an open space and you can 
meet um, babies and dogs mm. and scooters and uh, other members. And then I for privacy, you can duck into a phone booth. Mm -hmm. uh, we have private offices there. We have five conference rooms where you can have some privacy. Mm -hmm. So we really have, I think, a, a very innovative and very unique sense of how design creates community yeah, right, and how right. community creates sustainability. And, and do you guys, I think you used to, I don't know, do you still do like a community lunch on like Fridays or uh, community Wednesday, dinner? Wednesday, oh, Wednesday? 1230, we have our uh. salad club community lunch. So you can come over and you can join us. You can get a tour cool. uh, on a Wednesday. It's uh, socialinnovationnyc.org, I think. Wonderful. Uh, if you just, if you Google Center for Social Innovation NYC, uh, you'll come up with yeah. our website, uh, the website of the center. Our company is the Opportunity Lab, right. uh, so we're www.oplab.com. We're a member of the Center right. for Social Innovation. And so what does OpLab do? Uh, our mission is to empower conscious leaders to build great companies and make a difference in the world. We do that through uh, strategy and leadership development programs. So mm -hmm. we'll come in and we will put your company through a series of programs to help you build a culture of opportunity. Mm. One of our most unique programs is called Unlock Your Network. Mm. So we do a whole program for companies to unlock their social networks ah. um, and to show you that you actually have all of the resources that your company needs mm -hmm. to solve whatever problem that you have. Mm. Uh, we will build a map for you and that map will show you the key people, mm. organizations, markets, mm. sources of capital, knowledge and communication, when you see it as an interconnected ecosystem, you will be amazed that you have far more resources that you, than you even that's knew. Right, and once right, you right. identify the goal that you want to reach, we will help you find those resources from your existing community oh, to reach beautiful. that goal. Beautiful. Uh, are there particular industries that you find are maybe a little bit more open to your message than other industries? Or is this something that just kind of resonates across the board with people? Yeah, I think it. we have companies in all different sectors of the mm -hmm. economy. I think creative um, companies tend to be more open to this. So right. design companies, uh, software development companies, uh, product manufacturing companies. But we've had companies in real estate. We've had companies in manufacturing. Uh, oh, okay. We have companies in um, electrical supply, in retailing, in healthcare. Large in nonprofits, in right. social enterprises. Right. So it's, it's not so much about the sector; it's about the leader. So right. when right. Right. when there's a conscious leader that actually really wants to make that difference, mm -hmm. um, that's how they come to us. So, so one last question: I'm I'm just curious. Since you've kind of started on this journey back in 2008, what has really surprised you the most about? this whole idea of culture of opportunity and this 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 you know idea that business can actually be a positive force for change what surprised you most over the years that you've seen happen how many people are drawn to it really and how many people when you show them there's a different model yeah. how many people want to read about that model want to work in a company that has that model want to buy from a company that has that model so i'm very excited and very ah. very hopeful that we can draw those people in by having them read the book having them see the companies that we talk about in the mm -hmm. book, having them visit the Center for Social Innovation, and really get involved. So I'm, I'm extremely inspired by the number of people that have come to us as a company, mm -hmm. uh, for me, read the book. So there's a groundswell out there of people who actually see that we can make a difference. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, the name of the book is Culture of Opportunity. Where can people get it? Uh, you can go to Amazon and Amazon. just Google Culture of Opportunity or my name, Mark Monchak. You can go to our website and find the link to it there videos, webinars, content, uh, it's all there for you. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, do you ha how do people get in touch with you? How do they find out about Opportunity Lab and find out uh, about you? They can email us at dis discover at oplab, O-P-P-L-A-B dot com, mm -hmm. go to our website, uh, sign up for our newsletter, um, Wonderful. Come for a visit. A and any events coming up? Anything coming up you want to let our audience know uh, about? Sure, I'm doing a keynote at the Rotary Club New York City oh, on July 26th. I'm doing an impact community event um, at uh, Keller Williams real estate firm oh, on September 12th mm -hmm. and um, probably about a half a dozen podcasts that are recently in, uh, on our website. You can check out our website and it has all the information about what's going on with the book, Wonderful. with me and with our company. And that website one more time is? OPPLAB.com. Wonderful. Beautiful, Mark. Thank you so much. And once again, here you guys go on the Facebook live stream. Here's a, what the book looks like. <laughs>
thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come up here for the interview, Mark. I really appreciate it. It's great to reconnect with you. Sam, my pleasure. Thank you. Great You're show. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, I just want to give a big shout out, of course, to our viewers on the Facebook live stream that I didn't have a chance to shout out before. Shelly Ann, Franklin, Stephen, Mark, Micah, thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Go out and get this book. Culture of Opportunity, How to Grow Your Business in an Age of Disruption by Mark Monchek. It is a wonderful book, definitely something uh, to have uh, as in your wheelhouse as your reference. Let's come to another end of our show, and I get to announce that we now have one of our shows is immediately following the Conscious Consultant Hour. You will be listening to is it plugged in with Adam Jeffrey Weinberg starting a brand new show today? And you'll, you'll start uh, getting all his new shows uh, after my show Thursdays at 1 p.m. Remember, you can always catch the Conscious Consultant Hour here on talkradio.nyc, 12 noon Eastern Time, talkradio.nyc. We will be back next week. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll talk to you then. Music.